So something really important with patches is make sure they've taken off the old patch before putting on the new patch. We've had patients that come in from nursing homes and they have three fentanyl patches on. <laughs> That's very dangerous. Um, you know, clonidine patches, all those sorts of patches, make sure they're removed and properly disposed of, um, you know. Another people important thing with, with patches, especially in the, the little old people that are frail and cold and use heated blankets. Mm -hmm. um, you are going to impact the delivery from the patch into the patient. So if someone's on a fentanyl patch, using a heated blanket or um, even just a heating pad, they can overdose then because it's several days worth of fentanyl now being delivered now. Mm -hmm. um, I think something that I've noticed is when you try to use topical, say, lidocaine versus the lidocaine patch, I almost find that the patch works a little bit better than the topical lidocaine does, um, just like the cream or even the gel that the patch actually works better. I have no idea why. Um, <laughs> I'm assuming just because it's, um, you know, it's not evaporating and, it, and it's got a constant presence there for 12 hours versus the cream or the gel, like it's absorbed and then its presence is, you know, seeped out and then it's gone. Um, so I find that the patch works better, but the patch is more expensive. And I think too, I think that's the only patch that you can actually cut and not have it, the drug leak out too. Yeah. We don't. Versus like, like you can't patches. cut, you can't cut the fentanyl patch. Mm -hmm. They do in peds. Do they? Mm -hmm. We don't tend to do the buckle administration too much. Um, mostly, you know, like the ODTs for Zofran. Yeah. If the patient's really nauseous or mm -hmm. if it's a psych medication that the patient likes to cheek. Mm -hmm. That really actually works out well in mm -hmm. that case. Yeah. I had one incident happen where I've heard of it. Um, somebody had dropped a bottle of nitroglycerin, like the 250 milligram bottle, of, and it broke on the ground right near them. And they started getting really dizzy and very, very lightheaded. And so I don't know if it was inhaled or the drug literally just seeped through the skin as part of the vapors or what ended up happening. Like there was nothing that splashed but they started getting hypotensive from it. So I don't know if that would be something to consider exploring is that can you give nitroglycerin like inhaled and will it stay in the lungs or not in the lungs or, you know, it, it was just something different that you, I was not expecting to hear an adverse effect happening of just dropping a bottle near you. And so that's one of your safety things that you got to call all the orange suits in and your disaster <laughs> spill up kit. 